This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 478. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk geeky with you guys. Talking geeky with you guys. I, I don't know if we sound different yet. We'll find out later. Uh, but we are operating on some new hardware, the new hotness, because the other one died. So we put it on the charge card, and uh, here we are <laughs> on our new hardware. Uh, that maybe we'll talk about. Uh, maybe I'll talk about next week after we've. I've kind of had a week with it, but uh, look, look for a little bit of preview unboxing video that I recorded a little bit of today. But anyways, uh, with us in studio, first of all, he is the gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. He is John Chachilla. That's me. How's it going? Hi, buddy. It's good to be back in the studio. Good. I, think good. I was at home last week. You were at home last night from Studio C. It was good to have you back in. Um, and also back with us also from doing some other tech things over at Big Bank International is, uh, Crazy Krause, Ron Krause. Hello. Hello, sir. How are you? Welcome back. Your first show in 2020. I know you took a hiatus because you had, um, church stuff, church stuff to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if we can, but I think we talked about on here a little bit. You, you, you you were involved in, um, some choir productions singing. Yes. Yes. I'm not much of a singer but they asked me to be involved so i was i think you're probably what good baritone is that is that right? yeah it's in that neighborhood seems right i remember i remember my choir my choir days i actually got to see my high school choir room recently uh, nice. for the first time in like 20 years that was weird uh but uh uh anyways this is the awesome cast where we re- revisit where we revisit uh, old times hey producer missy is also with us and she has a microphone hooked up and it will always be hooked up because we have a bigger board now um so hey producer missy is that thing working is this where you expect me to talk yes <laughs> it works you still see hear her unmute herself but well that's fine that's fine that's that's when you know she's coming well it's, it's either you hear me unmute myself or you hear me typing throughout the entire show the new thing the next thing i need to do is put more cameras in here so we have every angle of producer missy hanging out over there and everything too i think you have an extra one we oh we got extra ones it's just hooking them up and listen it's a how many cameras do we have and how many do we have to tear out of the studio every weekend to do other productions ah. it's a it's a it's a balancing act and at this point all these microphones are going to disappear at some point and have to be and reset. The other, the other thing is, I really don't like being on camera. There's that so too. So I will completely put more monitors in front of my face if that's the case. <laughs> we got a big stack. I mean, we got to put an extra, a, extra jib crane to get over that giant one that uh, Chilla um, um, loaned me. Uh, <laughs> that's on my desk now. Holy crap! It's it's heavy, dude. It's it's huge. It's amazing. My uh, my productivity has been uh, uh, huge since uh since going to that it's great for editing so it's an old it's an old cinema display um like 2k like uh, 4K, a, oh, 2K. only 2k it's actually <clears throat> a lower resolution than my macbook my 2018 macbook but just bigger and a whole lot bigger and i'm only editing in two in in, in hd oh yeah so, so that's plenty. i only need one of the k's you only need just one K. i only need one of the k's and it's fantastic so um it, we'll see. so you have an extra k to spare i got like yeah i got like i got an extra k of overhead whereas on the laptop i had about three extra k's of overhead i don't know maybe maybe four i i don't i can't remember what a retina is so that leads to an interesting discussion before we get into the awesome things of the week so do you use the ports on the back of the display i do so so did i mm-hmm. and i missed those ports mm-hmm. i needed a I needed a different size monitor. To I fit. have a lot of stuff going into one hub, but, and that's okay. But there's still all of that capability where I don't feel like any monitor today. It fits that. Fits that because you had three USBs. You have a FireWire, which you're not going to get. Well, actually, I do use it because I still have a FireWire um, 
Camera. Hard drive. Okay, hard drive. So that it also has USB. But it spares me a USB. And ha- I just realized, I was like, I should probably plug Ethernet into this so it's like a little less taxing on the Wi-Fi. Um, but I don't know if I have a good router over there that would be full full speed. Um, yeah. It, it, what, what else? is uh, uh, the, the power comes through it? No, no. The power doesn't come through it. The power comes... No, the power does come through it because I thunderbolted it. Th- I have... It's a... Th- it's a Thunderbolt adapter into it, so I need to buy another one because I need those for live streaming uh, gigs as well. Uh, so we, we took from that. It's it's there's a lot going but, on. But I guess the, the moral of the story for me is I wish they would other companies would go back to that concept because mm-hmm. even at work I have one, I have one that has f- you plug one USB plug into your laptop and it has four usbs on the monitor two on the side and two underneath yeah so even to put in a thumb drive or a hard drive or whatever it's convenient it's convenient for when i just want to unplug and not have to take that stuff with me but when i get back to the Mm -hmm. mothership Mm -hmm. all that stuff is is pre yeah i'm gonna feel really sad when i take this thing on trips and only have the monitor and those usbs <laughs> and hope i brought all the adapters anyways we gotta get into some business this is the awesome cast you can check out everything at awesomecast.com email us at awesomecast sorgatronmedia.com tweet us at awesomecast uh and of course follow the awesomecast facebook page and group a lot of great discussion happening on the facebook group we'll have a few of the stories in the rundown for today and uh, please subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app. Uh, watch video versions on Facebook and YouTube. And now Instagram, actually. I need to add that in there. Uh, we are pulling, yeah, we're posting as long as we talked about last week. Um, as long as we stay under our hour limit on this show, this entire show will be on Instagram, IGTV, even though none of you are downloading the app. Uh, but, <laughs> but still, like you get it in Instagram. And if you watch content through there and and we're going to see if you guys do or not uh to be honest and and maybe new people do i don't know follow awesome cast over on instagram to see how that works out as well even if you're just interested in, in in seeing how that does happen um you can also check us out every tuesday on uh the awesome cast facebook live at 7 p.m eastern we also streaming on sorgatron and awesome cast uh, sorgatron media and awesome cast uh twitter periscope uh twitch page for sorgatron media as well as our youtube pages if you're joining us on any of those please uh keep in mind we are on the facebook live uh over on that page that is the live chat room that we are paying attention to through the night just like i see dave potter of the tiny shutter podcast is in there my mother is in there brian crawford of pghmuseums.org who just stopped in uh, the studio actually 10 minutes before the show to say hi uh patreon michael fedor and uh hank hudson hi what's up anyway somebody's got it on somebody's checking it out out there uh also please uh check out our partners at uh 405 me the 405 media.com streaming us and our friends at post industrial audio at postindustrial.com had a great meeting with those guys last week as well looking forward to see what they got coming on this year and uh of course if you're catching us later on one of the other outlets uh have some comments or tell us what uh, you know, tell us, tell us what we got wrong or, or different over here. Uh, hit us uh, on the tweets at AwesomeCast and the hashtag AC478. So let's get into, well, first, Patreon supporters. Thank you, patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. You guys out there, our friends at the $5 coffee club level, you guys are going to get us talking about the new Star Wars because all of us have finally seen it and uh, we have some opinions. Uh, so you can check that out if you're in there. Uh, Matt Weller, John Diggy DeGore, and John Carmen, and our friends at the Fan of Show doll- dollar level, uh, Michael Fedor, the longest running Patreon supporter, and our friends at pghmuseums.org. Now let's get into our awesome things of the week. Let's start with Krauss because you are. You're the news for this week, sir. You're the converted. You're dog fooding right now. You, yep, you, I am. You're the temporarily uh, converted. You're the Android Microsoft guy in our iOS world. By the way, most of the stuff over here is Microsoft. I want to point out that I'm running this show on. I want to point that out. Um, but but still. <laughs> but still. <laughs> so what, what are you doing? Well, I'm living in the an- a- iOS world. Oh, both of them. Yeah, okay, so wait, what- I, I made the switch. So you got an iPhone 11. Uh-huh. And, and what iPad is that? The new one. The new, is it a Pro? No, it's the, the new the, standard the iPad. Standard, okay. New standard iPad. Standard, what, nine point whatever inch yeah. iPad? Wait, no, 10. 10 inch. 10 inch. 10 two or whatever. Oh, that's right. That's right. They did bump up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so so tell me, tell so how's it going? Um, why are you doing this? Well, first of all, 
my day to day at Big Bank International is mobility. So I'm a mo- I'm a mobility guy. That's what I do for a living. And while my wife has an iPhone, um, I don't live the iPhone life, so to speak. And so while, yes, I can help and I play around with an iPad or an iPhone every now and again, I really don't have that quote unquote experience with, with living the, the iPhone world. So I, um, I decided that in January I was going to make the switch. I, you know, big bank bought me some new hardware this year and, uh, I took my SIM card and popped it over and I'm going to give it at least a month. I might even go longer. We'll see. He's not going back to Android. Ah, I didn't say I'm not going back over to the Apple side. Yeah. We have, we have cookies. gaming subscriptions. <laughs> yeah. And no cookies, because I think we got rid of those. Although, that is one of but my... But so is Google, I guess. The subscription thing is one of my biggest complaints. Really? Because... I'm loving my subscription because, because overlords. Because Android users think everything should be free. Mm-hmm. And developers I, yeah. should make no How's money. How's your no. subscription? <laughs> no, no. How's your Android Plus subscription, buddy? No, it's, it's not that. It's, okay, for example, we were talking about this earlier. I have a couple ringtones. One I use for my alarm clock, one I use for my phone, mm-hmm. my text tone. Yeah. I have them on my Google Drive. Every time I get a new Android device, I literally copy them down from the Google Drive. Okay. Onto the phone, hit the button, search for them, boom. They're now my text tone. They're now uh-huh. my my alarm clock. Perfect. Uh-huh. On Apple. I've now tr- attempted four times to convert those files to what Apple wants, yeah. and I've still not been successful. Well, what, what I think we, fr- we figured out, you might be using an old... Uh, yeah, maybe old, I'm old, using uh, old instructions. Yeah, I mean, the same thing happens on Android, right? Yeah. I've done that before. Well, no. It's an MP3. They, Android doesn't care. Okay. You just Listen, uh, here. Let me tell you about. You. Well, let me tell you about M4A and why it's better than everything. Okay. No. No. I'm not. That, that's yeah. not. That's not what's happening. Um. Yeah. Okay. There are always going to be little things. Uh, I mean, there are. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. everything's going to have the, its own little things. Yeah. Yeah. But for the most part, it's been a pretty enjoyable experience. Mm-hmm. I can see why people like the platform. Mm-hmm. Um. But you know, there's just quirks. Like, for example. My Fitbit. The only way I can get my step count to increase is to launch the app and let the Fitbit sync. Mm -hmm. I have background synchronization turned on and everything, but literally, if I want any of my others, like my my fitness pal or anything, to to get those steps, I have to open the Fitbit app two or three times a day, let it you know pull the the new data, Mm -hmm. and then go. Then suddenly everything is okay. It just doesn't do a whole... And then everybody says to me, oh, let's get an Apple Watch. <laughs> but my Fitbit hey! was $129. Why, yeah, why don't you complete the full set? Yeah. Get your Apple Watch, get your Apple TV. Yeah, I'm sure Chilla Apple has TV three of them sitting in a closet for you. I have an Apple TV. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, let's just complete the whole set. Yeah. I mean, I, I keep I keep getting thrown when my Apple... When I look down at my watch and it has the controls for whatever I'm watching on my Apple TV. And again, these are things I've just experienced because I've had internet for the last two months for the first time in a while since I've gotten yeah. all these devices. So I was, it's like I stepped forward in the future a little mm-hmm. bit. Um, so so how long are you do- doing this? At least a month. At least a month on iOS devices. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is so you I've understand. i put down all the Android. I, well, I haven't put it down. I still carry it in my bag. You ha- yeah, yeah. But... But I'm living in the Apple ecosystem. And, and we talked about you're my... doing you're doing Apple Mail and everything, which right. I advise against. Uh, <laughs> to be our, by personal preferences, do not do it. You're right. Yeah, but I know you're doing it for a reason, so you know how it works. Right. And, 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 and I want to experience what, what my users are experiencing. Yeah, yeah. So. That's good. That's yeah. a really good collective thing. I think we have somebody else in the chat room who's done, done, done that recently. Um, uh, my mother says you need an Apple Watch. Uh, <laughs> so uh, there, there it is. Uh, uh, Potter is saying, "One of us, one of us, one of us." Yeah. Uh, yes. So, I, well, well, welcome, welcome. Thanks. I, I, I want to. I, I definitely want. How many weeks? Are, how far into it's this? It's been are two you? weeks. It's been two weeks. Yeah. 
I, I want another. I want you back here in two weeks. Okay. Uh, or three weeks, or however after the yeah. thing to see. Like I want. What are the final determinations mm -hmm. off of this? Yeah, and then experiment. when I leave this, mm -hmm. I'll be going to the S10 because um, the Android 10 release just came out. <laughs> so that'll be my next test. Uh, in relation, uh, Chachi, who I think, Chachi, didn't you just hop over to the Pixel from he the Samsung? He went from Pixel to from yeah. the Galaxy S9. From the, you know, the Galaxy From this series. Galaxy Forever. S9. Forever yeah. he's been on the Galaxy. I, I bought his old Nest. S9. Oh, did you? <laughs> or Note. I'm sorry, oh, Note 9. Nope. Literally literally that one. That <laughs> literally right I didn't this realize device. That's what we're doing. Which one right did, here. did he get the four or the three? I feel like it was the four, maybe. Um, but he says he did that as well, the, the iOS uh -huh. month. Um, and he says it sucked. So he's been, dude, this guy, he's also had Android since the first Android right. phone. So he has literally grown up with Android, like much like how I have grown up with uh, yeah, from the first iPhone that oh, I got right. secondhand. I still uh, miss the sidekick. You miss the sidekick. I mean, we all miss the sidekick. I mean, the, I mean, the feeling like you're like pulling out a battle, a batarang to do that. Tell yeah. that client. Tell that client. Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> there it is. Um. Anyways, so Chilla, what is your awesome thing of the week? So my awesome thing is there is a dad who modified the Xbox adaptive controller mm -hmm. to help his daughter play Zelda Breath of the Wild. So this gentleman hails from the UK, Rory Steele, got his daughter a Nintendo Switch at Christmas time, mm -hmm. and his daughter suffers from HSP. It's a hereditary, and I'm going to mess up the pronunciation. So it's pretty much a fine motor and speech Um disability um so he actually took oh wow he considers himself a little bit of a tinkerer as mm -hmm. he says in the article uh, and he customized the control pad for the switch by emulating the joy con buttons on Flavor, how is it microsoft oh, adaptives yeah. or microsoft xbox adaptive controller which if you remember last year on the super bowl microsoft did a big splash splash with their adaptive yeah. controller um, and they've followed up on that in a couple of other seg segments. Um, so between the adaptive controller and some parts from eBay, um, at about $143, he built um, a controller so his daughter could play Breath of the Wild, which I thought was pretty amazing. That is and, awesome. Um, and they're playing video from their Twitter of her with the uh, the controller right now. And and this is there wasn't much more adaptation uh, adaptation from the controller. Is there? Did you have to rebuild from the original controller to do this, or is it just adapting it to? I think it's a little bit of both. Oh, it is a little bit of both. So it looks like it's got two joysticks in the middle, and then just buttons around all the outside. Um, if you're looking at it there, and he's got an adapter underneath that that goes to, which I, I think re and there's the here's a lot of the rigging. Uh, it looks like underneath the buttons that he did. If you're on the video with us here. So um, that's interesting. And, and uh, by comparison, there's the adaptive controller, the original adaptive controller. And actually, it's just two pads for the most part on the Xbox. Yeah, but there's a bunch of other pieces, and there's right. plug in. It's adapting. There's pluggable pieces okay. that you plug mm -hmm. in. Oh, it. it's that thing. Okay. Because we, we had this before, because we talked with somebody at um, the Alpha Lab demo day that was doing this. Um, oh, I think they were called like Black Box or something. It's in, it's in, I know it's in our. Our, our uh, stuff. Okay, so you can plug other devices into it as well. Um, like I'm seeing all these other kind of buttons and switches and toggles uh, that you're doing, and that and yeah, the, and that's that's the big thing because you really have to adapt for the element for the actual mm -hmm. person, right? Yeah. So I mean, that's that's really cool. Um, so awesome, I, and and hopefully, I mean, I think Xbox was the first to do this on the company level for a console. Is that true? Which. As far as I know, yes. And I will say, if you ever get a chance, and I could not find the video before the show today, but if you ever find the video that shows the box that the adaptive controller comes in, mm -hmm. the box is completely accessible, whether you pretty much for any accommodation so or if disability. I, so if I'm handicapped, have and and need this thing i probably can't get into the typical store box of electronics yes the box is, is completely really accessible. that's that, cool super cool just a lot of open thinking i, I love mm -hmm. that i love that um cool so go check that out and please if you're on the audio uh, we'll have the links uh, to the story in the 
notes um, and uh, the, the show description. And, and please go check that out. It's really cool to see her um, playing those games. So I kind of have two. I have a I have a mini awesome, and I have a a, a main awesome um, that is is uh, working off Chachi or you know. Chilla's, sorry, Chachi's in the chat room talking. Uh, <laughs> Chilla's uh, previous awesome. So first, I'll do this one. Um, this is the this is your um, your your little connector. Uh, let me double check what that the na- the full name of this. This, this is the and this uh, you know my brother had one too. This is just that little ten dollar thing, and it's amazing amazing what difference this thing makes. Uh, it's the uh, Weppy Geek uh, foldable controller, mobile phone holder for and I have it on an Xbox One controller. The, the, what this does to open up your gaming is pretty awesome. I'm so sad my Mega Man games are not compatible with this, but all the Sega Forever games are. Um, but to the point where um, I, I'm finding games now that I've had on here for a while, and I'm, I'm reinstalling um, Grand Theft Auto 3 to stuff that makes sense, but I didn't know that the Telltale games will adapt to having a controller on the phone. So I... Th- so will Knights of the Old Republic? Knights of the Old Republic, like ones like that. Yep. Um, unfortunately, other ones that I can think of are probably not compatible with the current iOS. So <laughs> that makes me sad um, because I have a lot of like arcade games and things that, that, that were on there. I'm getting a message. There it is. Um, but yeah, though this is this was great to kind of jump in here. And I, I still need to... I've been playing Batman the Enemy Within. and well, I hadn't for a while because honestly, because... Um, um, uh, uh, Apple Arcade and things like that. Plus, just Apple Arcade in general. Like, there's games on there, like the skate game that uh, the Aldo's Adventure guys did. I hate the touch controls for it. The, I just cannot get into them. But I love it on my Apple TV, and I, I'm going to love it on this as well. So, this thing also just barely, barely, barely fits my super size 8 Plus in an OtterBox case. So, that was a little sketchy for me. Um, but other than that, like it's it's fine. I, I'm hoping it's not too much wear and tear stress in this thing. Um, but uh, but yeah, it, this this has been cool. Uh, other surprising one, I'm gonna, I I think I'm going to play. I, I'll probably play Fortnite more on my phone than I will my Xbox, just in general, <laughs> because that's just where I think to play because that's where I always have. And also, um, Call of Duty Mobile works with the controller. That's, That's what awesome. I want to start. Get. I haven't gotten so. Into I mean, I have it downloaded. So but it, it, it feels that. a lot like it feels a lot like um, Call of Duty. And listen, I got a copy of Advanced Warfare and Black Ops Three sitting there uh, that I don't jump into. But if it's like I can pull it up and jump into it, like this feels like where I want to do that. So, so I've noticed myself switching from playing on the Xbox to playing on the Switch. Mm-hmm. Even like I rebought It's just easier. Overwatch. Right? Mm-hmm. Which I would never play on the TV on my Switch, but I will I play it sitting on my couch on the Switch. Um I've I've seen myself grabbing a couple other titles that I've owned on other platforms. Which is where I think I'll I'll probably take a hiatus from a lot of the Xbox content until XCloud comes out. Mm-hmm. Because then you're going to have xCloud on your iPhone yeah, with that yeah. kind of controller. And yeah. I think that's perfect. Now, my brother um, has the xCloud beta. And he's been playing on He's got a nice a nice Android phone. And, and he was playing stuff on... Jesus, uh, oh, what was I playing? So is he playing in his house or yeah. on, his, on his Wi-Fi? In his house, on his Wi-Fi, on xCloud. Which is interesting because I, I have an older laptop at home. And I tried using the in-house Xbox stream. And it didn't seem to work very well. Okay. So he said, oh, plug it in the Ethernet. I was like, this would really kind of work, shouldn't it? Um, maybe I'm not close enough to my, my Ethernet or something. I, I think it's – and that's where xCloud's going to – It's also a slower computer. Switch. Yeah. I don't think that – I don't think that's the issue. You're okay. not you're not running off of X Cloud. You're running off of your local game My gameplay, local gameplay, right. which is on an older Xbox One. Does that make a I've difference? No, I think it's the it's the technology on the back end. Okay. So you're doing a you're doing like an old school remember PC anywhere? Yes. Or log me in. Yes. You're getting a screen scrape of that local machine. Yes. Versus getting an optimized version running off the cloud or off the end mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's that would be optimized to bring that so, to that other endpoint so it's already, it's already optimized to come over the internet to you versus your ha- your your xbox is sending a, uh, something into the network to you which i feel like should be easier but maybe it's just not as good at it um yeah. so so i'm looking forward to that coming to ios 
I'm also looking forward to, and I need, I need a good computer in my house because all the good computers are streaming stuff here at the studio. <laughs> but I need a good computer in the house to run all my PC games, which not like I don't need a high end one, just like enough to play Rocket League. And then, okay. like, Rocket League on down, because I have, like, the first Transformers uh, War for Cybertron, uh, you know, games like that. The first, the Walking mm-hmm. Dead stuff, uh, Double Dragon Neon, uh, the Duck game. Uh, you know, I, I just want a computer that will run all that so stuff you need a decent and stream it, like an okay computer. You know, I know mm-hmm. the computer sitting over here is good enough to do that because it runs like Street Fighter V, right. but it's running our Indie Wrestling Network stuff. So now I've lost that again. Right. Uh, so I can't play Street Fighter V because uh, I'm back to streaming 24-7 on that. So that's that's my hang up there, but I can't wait to get that figured out. Maybe I'll get a knuck or something um, and uh, and play just the stream link anytime I want in bed. <laughs> Right. It's, it's like, can I just do it in bed? Also, Missy's been getting into <laughs> Assassin's Creed, so I want to be able to sit there and play my thing. And and you know, if that expands out to not having a laptop in my thing and just having this thing that's like this Nintendo Switch type thing with a controller, mm-hmm. I think it's awesome. So, um, so I, I that stretch that other awesome thing, mini awesome thing, because once again, the uh, internet. I'm 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 having internet in the house. I'm I'm expanding, and I'm realizing as we're going to shop, and we're like, and and we got, uh, Missy got a new a a new lamp for the bathroom, and I'm like, oh cool, I can we can Wi-Fi it. I got one of the plugs, and we can say, you know, hey G, um, turn on the bathroom light when I'm stumbling in at two in the morning, right? Um, at fifty percent, and then it won't be as bright. Well, well, here's the thing. We're looking at LED bulbs, and I haven't looked at light bulbs for a while. I didn't know they're not still spirals, uh, <laughs> for instance. I didn't know. Yeah. It's been a while since I bought bulbs. And then right beside them, the same price as the bulb she was looking at was a Sylvania bulb for 8 bucks with Smart Wi-Fi bulb. in it. Yeah. So that was my first attempt with that, and it was honestly easier than the plugs. Yeah. Although I saw complaints um, uh, from some people that got the do home plugs that I got uh, that they are kind of tough to get on the network. So... Uh, but once they get in there, you're you're kind of okay. Mm-hmm. So my my issue, or the to me the 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 true test to the bulb or the switch is what happens when your power goes out. I agree. Okay. Because okay. I have the same problem. Oh wait, wait. Is this the thing where if the power goes out, all the lights are going to come on? Yep. <laughs> it's a, but Even then if you it's know. in the middle of the day. But then you know that the power. My clock's flashing. I know. I know the power <laughs> went out. <laughs> I got, I got, I got my, I got my, my clock's I flashing. Own, I get a text message from Ring. I, I get, only have the stove one, and we don't even bother setting it anymore. So last I knew, but like yes, even yes, I do. Oh, we Ring. do now. Well, we, <laughs> we're actually using our, we're actually using our kitchen now, so that makes a difference. Other than my clock situation, you know what time it is? It's pizza time. And we give a shout out to our good friends supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Our friends Slace on Broadway in Beachview, Carnegie, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Go check them out. It is delicious. The finest of pizza-ness in Pittsburgh. I know, I know, Krause, you've, you've gone two months without it. I know you were, yeah, you're, it was you're, very good. you were digging on it when you got mm-hmm. it in here. There you go. Uh, so go check them out. Our good friends support us for a long time. Slice on Broadway. Four fantastic locations in Pittsburgh. And uh, they've been supporting us for a good a long time in the podcasting world. So uh, let's get into a few stories from our Facebook group on AwesomeCast. Uh, we, get, we guys put a lot of great stories out there through the week. We share a lot of what we talk about here on the show. First of all, Brian Crawford... Our friend at pghmuseums.com sent us a story. I hate that it's TMZ, but it's a real story. Um, suitable for Dutters being here, but I know she's out on assignment uh, somewhere in the world. So, Pornhub's in the news. Again. Uh, yeah, yeah, how about that? Oh, man, I need to reset this. Uh, so, yeah, Pornhub's in the news again. Um, and apparently, uh, they got sued for um, not, um, not being accessible to the deaf. Wow, um, which is a big deal. That's usually an ex- extremely expensive. So th- fine. We're, we're talking about, and I, I did not get a chance to go through this. Uh, but are we talking about descriptive? Um, I guess getting through the website is probably a problem for the deaf, right? To find what you're looking for. So um, I mean, I, for the deaf, I mean, there's a search. You so, could. 
So here's, according to the docs obtained by TMZ, uh, the, the plaintiff says uh, a lack of closed captioning violates their rights under the, oh, I'm sorry, the deaf, I'm thinking, I'm thinking blind. sucked, yeah. uh, the blind. Okay, uh, so, so there's no closed captioning on the videos, and uh, that violates their rights under the Americans with Disabilities Act. I, so how do they not have like a YouTube will auto caption yeah. at the very least? But that's a YouTube technology, right? Uh, that's true. Like well, they can't license something like that? Here's here's a question There's, that I have. Mm-hmm. Generally speaking, the language that's, that's used for some, you know, other products. Mm-hmm. If I'm watching a movie... There's dialogue, there's text, there's, you know, different things happening. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. With pornography, mm-hmm. how much dialogue is there? Well, <laughs> well you'd, be, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. I mean, I, I'm, I not saying be, it's, but... I'm not saying it's good dialogue, but if you're really into the story, I understand why this guy's upset. Um, you're like, listen, I need a situational <laughs> awareness to get to the thing. Like, that's my thing, whatever that is, and whatever situations there are. Also consider, stuff on Pornhub is not necessarily being put there by Pornhub. That's true. Other people are uploading it themselves. Other people are taking other content. I know for a fact that content I have created is on Pornhub. That was not initially meant to be porn, by the way. Um, But... (laughs) You guys got some weird things going on with wrestling footage, but uh, but it, so and we do not close caption just for cost on our end because we're mass producing this stuff and at, at scale and low cost for wrestling. Um, so so there's that. Uh, so are you leaving yourself liable? I I well, no Pornhub's a, that's a good question. I guess am I? I By ooh. not closed oh. captioning. Let's not talk about that on okay. this show while I consult my lawyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, here's here's another question that I have with it. So I know that we've done closed captioning on like WWE content mm-hmm. for Brian. Yeah. Okay, so that's cool. Um, I know how horrible closed captioning can be to the extent that I hear what it's saying just fine. Mm-hmm. And when I'm reading what mm-hmm. it's interpreting, sometimes it's not accurate. S- so the goal should be to not rely when you're using closed captioning on already recorded content. It's going to be better typically. You, what you're going to do is you're going to let it let the AI closed caption it and then go back and yeah. read and yeah. fix it. And fix and, it. And trust me, I'm I'm trying to figure out solutions with that with what we have. Like we are turning on auto captioning for everything including this show and seeing what happens right Mm -hmm. now. And so at least there's something happening. Mm -hmm. And then the next step I'm looking at, and again, this is at our scale. Like the, we don't, you know, we don't have a big budget, you know, to do this stuff. What can, does it help to take that and re-edit it? Right. And have somebody do that versus somebody first run through closed caption. And it is something I'm looking at. uh, And and it's also something with wrestling, you know, because you have to time code. I yeah. would think the to ca- do it manually you, up front yes. is much more expensive and time consuming. Oh, yes. Yeah. Doing the, Missy, Missy let does the AI do transcription. it and then fix so, it. And she's just doing transcription. She's not doing coding for the times. The times. And right. I've done short form stuff for podcast advertisements for that. Also, I have done closed captioning for an entire 10 minute video for safety training in DVD format. And how long did that take? Forever. Because it was also imagine. likely in a foreign language, oh so boy. yeah, yeah. So I so this is this is a heavy thing, and when you're doing something at scale, like Pornhub should maybe they will after this for what they're doing at scale. If this is a concern of theirs, look into those automatic solutions. I'm sure they can input something. Is something wrong with the headphones over there? Are you okay, Chilla? Yeah, they're pinching me weird. You got you got a pinchable head, I think. I do have a pinchable yeah, head. Yeah, I think that's what's going on here. And I'm trying to figure out which one's left and which one's right. Uh, <laughs> I don't think, does it, well, I guess for fit, I guess. There, there's L's and R's on there for somewhere. For fit, there's L's and R's on the yeah. inside. Yeah. Like where your thumb is. There we go. That's why it hurts. You're, you had it on Oh, wrong. that's oh. much better. Ah. It helps if the headphones are on the right way. I'm weird with my headphones because I like one off and one on. But occasionally, like, I'll flip it back. He's just Which, trying to be an 80s DJ. Here's, you know? here's, here's my thing. He's supposed to be our tech guru, and he doesn't know how to operate a pair of headphones. 
Well, he's not operating <laughs> headphones. He's placing listen, them on his head. Listen, we're supposed to be the AV professionals here at Sorgatron Media. And <laughs> that's just, you know, maybe we need to better mark these. Um, or remind them, make sure you put them on the right way. I don't know. We need, we need to be in, inviting color our code. guests. Listen, yeah, color code. Yes. Anyways. What the hell are we? At? What's next? I, we're running long on this, probably. Yes. Uh, but anyway. Japan and the miniature cats. Japan, Get to the Japan and the miniature, miniature cats. furniture for cats. I I I want to help furnish a room for for Dutter's uh, collection of cats right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Miniature Japanese Japan, the country of Japan apparently, uh, releases a range of furniture, miniature furniture for cats. There is a cat sleeping on a cat sized bed. And that how is, did they get that cat to go on that bed? That's I, the question. Very, maybe, maybe they tranquilized it. I don't know. That cat looks like it's doing just fine my, uh, on that couch right there. My cat climbs on everything oh. and will invade our and entire it, upstairs if we let it. So can get matching big person versions. This is fantastic. Yeah, because that cat's not going to sleep. Yeah, that, sit on the big this person is version. Great. That, that that cat is immediately going to jump I on the big person version. Exactly. Thank I you, love cat it. owner. Oh no, hold on. What is this video doing? I don't know. It's in Japanese. There's the cat. It's sneaking up on that bed. There it is. It just, it, no, we put catnip in the bed. We put something in there for it to go check out. Uh, or we just tired out the cat before this thing happened. Jeez. Yeah, this is very, very in Japanese. This is needs closed captions. <laughs> this yeah, is what needs. English. No, that's a, that's a translation. I think that's a little different, isn't it? That's so. a little bit of both. Because <laughs> oh. usually when they do that, they're. They're closed captioning and then using a translator to the closed oh, yeah. caption. Oh, of course. Of course. So um, there's that. Brian Croft for pghmuseums.org submitted that as well. Missy, you have something. What the hell did Ford do? Also including animals. <laughs> it's it's a prototype. It's not anything that they're looking to, to do, but they've, they've built it. Um, it's a noise-canceling kennel. To mm -hmm. protect dogs from firework noises. Ooh. So I, I know here in Beachview, we have rogue fireworks going off. All summer. And I heard some the other day. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's Are you serious? Yes. It's, it's Dormont, it's pretty much. Dude, they it's, love it's fireworks all the time. It's year-round. Okay. Um, Wait, which, in my neighborhood, that's called gunfire. <laughs> no, no, because it's, it's it's a question of is it gunfire. No, no, here is it, it, yeah. You can actually see the little sparkles up over here. We, over here and here we you. play a game: <laughs> gunfire or fireworks in the city. Yes, here here there are definitely fireworks. Occasionally gunfire, mostly fireworks. Yes, um, yes, but it can be uh, enough plausible deniability for fireworks. It, to it feel can safe. be. It can be a problem for dogs. Yeah, and oh, I've yeah. seen in, in like oh, our yeah. neighborhood thing that there are, are dogs that, especially during during the summer months around the Fourth of July, you know, the Super Bowl is another fun time that people are out with fireworks. Um, and Gunfire. New Year's, there's there's a bunch of other stuff with fireworks. Oh, well, this Scotty dog is is not is not happy about fireworks. Yeah, so <laughs> the, the dog can go in there, and it's a safe space for them. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of sound canceling, and it's it honestly. By the way, this video closed caption for you guys on video. Oh yay! <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, that's essentially what Ford is w looking to do. And like, there's, uh, if you look down through the article, it indicates that, um, it's helped 5,000, uh, dogs and owners with behavior problems. And, mm -hmm. you know, the dog trainer who's done that has, has helped to, with the design for it. Um, but it's, it's kind of cool that they're looking to, to do that. Awesome. Uh, by the way, and follow up in the chat room too. Uh, Chachi says they train Chewy to use the bed stairs with, uh, with cheese. So there you go. Uh, I think when we were talking about the cast too. Uh, Ponderous was growing up. We had to give our dog a uh, at a van in the Fourth of July during thunderstorms. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. This is a serious thing. Like, listen, dog anxiety is a real thing. <laughs> so, all right, I want to keep moving. Thank you, Missy, for that. Um, Chilla, wait, is this in the wrong? Am I in the wrong? Chilla, you put this in the wrong thing. You're not, you're not in the right place. Yeah, I'm but, not in the right. Yeah, I'm, yeah. In the, I'm in the That's wrong fine. place at the That's wrong time. That's fine. You're cool. Um, anyways, hey, a lot of stuff going on here in house here at Sorgatron Media. If you're interested in, in in your own podcast or video production or anything of the sorts, please go check out our in house development here. Sidekick meets media services. Let us be the sidekick in your superhero project, whether that be podcasting, video. Uh, all the things I just said, live events, we do a lot. We're setting up for a pretty big event 
um, coming up here in the near future. Go check out what we've been working on and uh, websites, all kinds of stuff. Help that with pghmuseums.org, actually, uh, and, and talking with a lot of great people, uh, including working on uh, something great for this network. Hey, we just had Sally Wigan in here in the studio uh, earlier this week, or last week, actually. Uh, my weeks are blending together earlier this month um, for our friends at the broadcast that we've been helping them with uh, uh, keeping that show rolling forward. So uh, go check that out and check out all the work we've been working on at sidekickmediaservices.com and find out how we can help you with your superhero project. Okay, let's now I'll go get ch- whatever Chilla had in the wrong spot. <laughs> you can ju- you can just do the first one cuz the first one cuz so I didn't realize Kraus had the second one. We are we are uh, highly invested in wise cameras. I have two more in my cart ready to go as soon as I have a couple bucks that I had to buy a soundboard um for from our house and uh and maybe more for the studio. But uh wise I know has had a lot of Weird stuff happened with, of course, the security breach, and and I know we know that they're going to lose their person detection. So, and they lost they lost it in the last firmware update. Mm-hmm. If you yeah, if you updated your firmware, there's no more. Shoot, I just did that today. No, no more person detection for that, you, and that was helpful. Yep, it definitely was helpful. Um, and they they really didn't explain why. They just said it, the deal ended or the, something. The deal ended. Yeah, the deal ended, and. Like they didn't have some right to carry forward. Um, I can't remember the fine print. Yeah, they couldn't carry forward the fee. Yeah, and, and we got—I think we got that announcement around Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, it was like November. Um, and lo and behold, in the last week, we now know why. Mm-hmm. Um, the company, what was it? AI uh, X X Nor X Nor AI, AI um, has been bought by Apple. Hmm. <laughs> Um, the theory is that they're going to be using it to make Siri smarter. That did all on device detection and didn't require mm-hmm. um, the the internet back end, um, which is pretty in- impressive based on what it's doing. And when you think of, it's not like the Wise camera has like some huge CPU or and or some huge onboard memory. Mm-hmm. Um, cause when you think of when you flash the firmware, it's not a huge file, right? Right. Um, so that being said, my thought process is this is, this is going to make a very interesting story come either WWDC this year or WWDC next year. We'll see where they go. Yep. Hmm. Well, if it just happened, they'll probably need a little time. So probably hmm. next year's a better yeah, because whatever they bought, unless it's something that, that's complete plug and play, what they have going on, or maybe they're already working on something. And they right? found something. Yeah, this yeah. will just fix a problem they had or something. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Well, then, and I look at it, like look at what Wise did with it, with their apps and with the device. I, I can't imagine it'll be too hard to integrate should they choose to. And I think it'll be one of those you get you get things one and two this year, and you get. Mm-hmm. Ten more things next well, year. Yeah, we know this. That the, 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 they're slow with stepping up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, to uh, detriment and positivity, right? So, um, all right, Kraus. Well, since you're talking well, about cameras, yes. Why do people keep putting cameras in the quote unquote sensitive parts of their home? I think they're not thinking about the, what they're doing. Maybe they don't have a consciousness for that. Or maybe they need a camera there at some times. Yeah. So, so that for instance... Dis- that was a discussion that just happened on This Week in Tech or something, didn't it? Or, I, I or, or maybe that. Daily Tech News Show or yeah. something. Because it was like, you know, because somebody was talking about... Or actually, I think it was iOS Today, now I think about it. I, you know, one of the million podcasts that I listen to, definitely not the one about WWE, um, <laughs> but uh, who knows? Uh, but <laughs> they were talking about... Um, Oh, my video paused again. But anyways, I, you know, the, the the idea that I want the camera on some of the times, I know there's scheduling you can do with the wise camera I've been playing with, with if this and that and, and uh, echo and things. Um, I haven't implemented though, because I've been concerned. With, like you want the dog we, camera, you want you want something like that. Well, like we right? want we we want it while Christopher's sleeping. So yeah, baby if, camera, baby camera. Mm-hmm. But I mean. It, Picks but, up the hallway. But not like my bedroom where bedroom things happen. Yeah, right. Yes. Like, there's probably little reason I should have one in my bathroom or, or anything like that. Like, I, I, I mean, or at least. So so now you have to trust that, that when I turn it off, it actually turns off, right? 
So anyway, so there is a story that goes with this before we explain explain why this is happening. Chilla, there's a reason. It's not my story. Oh no! Wait, whose story is Krause, it? Krause, there's it's a reason. Mine. Krause, there's a reason. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what. They say the wrong name. Extortion is Sextortion on the rise. Extortion because we put cameras everywhere. Right. And it's in the clouds somewhere. Yep. And people like to get into people's clouds. Yes. <laughs> and then bad things happen. It's, it's, and it's, next it's, thing you know, you're getting an email. It's saying, the internet version of hiding in the closet. Hey, we got some pictures. Hey, how about them pictures? Yeah. We got them. We got them. Jeez. Wow. So, moral of the story don't put cameras in the sensitive parts of your so, house. So, like, I go back to. I go back to. So that, like, where that camera is placed picks up the doorway. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, we're talking about a ring. So what? Okay, here... You know, here, like, upstairs, like, when, when it's... When it's... For, for on. When it's on as a baby cam. Yeah. It has a small view of that doorway mm-hmm. coming into the room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you were to pass from the bathroom... Into our you, bedroom. You're right. You're gonna pick up that motion. Yeah. So if I forget the towel for the shower. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's home here. I go. And nobody's home here. I go. Everybody. Exactly. Everybody's seeing full chilla mode. And I can't. But I can't Whoa. run in there to turn off the. I mean, I guess I could grab. Yeah. My yeah. You're not gonna think about it because it's just the thing that per- persists there. Yeah. Well, and I think well, isn't the also the thing with ring? Okay, I guess ring. You can put them anywhere. We're, not, we're but, using but nest. Isn't up there isn't it a little one, bit but. of hey? I just saw your mistress come in because I see it on your ring doorbell. Right? Uh, I think mm-hmm. that might be a little bit, too. So, anyways, the story that you're saying, um, sextortion is, is on the rise, targeting Ring and Nest. The scams have accounted for $83 million in losses in 2018, according to this. Right. So, but, but and it's what, also, like, you're probably a targeted individual. It's not, I don't think anybody's after Chilla I, and, and want to see his Chilla mode. But the, the other thing that I've read is that people are taking Nest camera, and this was a glitch that mm-hmm. I think they've corrected, but people were taking Nest cameras. Mm-hmm. Never deregistering them and then selling them. Oh, yeah, because yeah. then they were an authorized user on All that right. camera. Yeah, yeah. And then the per- second person set it up and they set it up as if it was new, but they just added their account to that device. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it seems there's not every use case and workflow right. has been figured out for sell and resell is this been applying else. to nest and ring cameras though because those are the two of the biggest with two of the i know companies. the nest i know the nest one and google had the issue with the resale okay they did where when people would sell the device if they didn't appropriately remove their account and re remove the account and reset the device mm-hmm. when the second person set it up the first person still had access see that's just yeah. not, i don't even know if that's something i would resell I think I would smash it. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a hard drive. You're going to smash that. You thing. know what I mean? No, but seriously. seriously you would know, smash your, your phone. It, but yeah, I guess. But when I factory reset the phone, it well, no. I've, pull, I've pulled text messages off the right. factory reset phone mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. held up in court. Okay. Wow. Really? So how is that court date for that guy? That's, that's, a, different, that's a different <laughs> story for a different yeah. time. Okay. All right. Um, so... But no, that court date is coming up in February. Fantastic. We'll, we'll keep updated on that. If you're mm-hmm. curious about what that's about, check out the end of the home animation special we uh, put up at the end of December. Okay, real quick, because we only we do only have a few minutes left of the show here. Uh, any stories we want to touch on before we get out of here? Anything really good that's going on here? Or any of mine that you guys want to see? I want to try the Ben and Jerry's flavor. Ben and Jerry's Netflix and chill flavor. Have you Good. seen it in the so wild? The first. No, I don't go grocery shopping. I use Instacart. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, wow. Yes. Uh, we'll, we'll check it on Instacart. I'm sure it's in there. Uh, but anyways, uh, so it's going to be, you know, what's going to happen now is we have food related things like this. And usually when like, like. Your chilla, your controller doodad that I've been using that we mm-hmm. talked about earlier. I threw it in my cart while we were sitting here talking. Now we're going to talk about Ben and Jerry's, and then I'm going to put gonna that in my Instacart, cart, yeah. and then just by chance have it the next time I go put an order in. That's that's what we moved to you, now. You, you just have to be careful with that because I've 
I accidentally bought like three pairs of headphones. Yeah, that. Oh no, no, no. no I'm very, because I watch out for those. Because yeah. like I added it to the cart, and then I was like, oh, I'll check with Carla to make sure which ones you which want. ones you yeah. want. And then like I I re added it again. Like so, I ended up I ended up returning one and kept another pair as a backup. But yeah, it can get. You can really blow out your bank account. <laughs> no, Acc- no, trust me. Totally accidentally. I've accidentally hit order, and then like all of the uh, all of the dash button cancels I had for for the eighty dollar ink cartridges have been in. I'm like, whoa, no, 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 <laughs> cancel, yeah. cancel, cancel. Mm-hmm. So, um, thankfully, that's been uh, okay. They don't have it at Aldi's. Uh, <laughs> it's at Costco or Target. <laughs> so, uh, but no. Uh, so Ben and Jerry's made a binge worthy uh, Netflix and chill ice cream flavor, according to Engadget. It is oh, what is the official flavor? Peanut butter ice cream with sweet and salty pretzel swirls and fudgy brownie and fudge brownies. Because when you think Netflix and chill, also, do they not have the Urban Dictionary version of Netflix and chill in there? <laughs> That they researched when they did this, because it means something else, doesn't it? But they do that all the time. Yeah, okay. yeah all I mean, right. They you definitely use like the double. Okay. Double yeah. All right. For different all things. right. So it's it's for it's um, it's it's for it's for ice cream play. I get you, I get you. Uh, so that's a thing. Um, I I usually only get Ben and Jerry's when uh like hey um American coned uh, that uh Colbert had when he had his other show. Uh, was I think they one. still have that going. I think it is still going, right? American and they and they have one for what's his name? One of the other nights. Uh, Jimmy Knight, Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, has I think one. he has one too. It makes sense. Um, they have the Cherry Garcia. Yeah, but who's the other band? Fish. It's usually fish. Mm, they they do have fish food. Of course they do. Of course they do. And then who does ants marching and. Hmm? Ah, the band. I don't know. Dave Matthews. Dave Matthews. They have, Dave, they have one sweet. Okay. Was it one sweet? Thank world you, producer made it, Missy. Thank you. Nice. She was on mute for that. Um, they have they have a flavor. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, there's a number of them out there. Can we go back to Instant Cart for a second? One second, because we only I, have. A I few still minutes don't on. have Hulk Hulk burn and fudge though, which uh, really upsets me. What's up? Uh, you're comfortable with people picking out your produce? Missy is going to have a bigger issue than I do for it. Although we did, the last person that delivered it is somebody we know that lives two blocks away. And he's just like, I picked out all the good stuff for you. I'm like, all right. So, because that, uh, that, that's my one issue yeah. with all of the different services. Oh, absolutely. Like, absolutely. Having someone pick out but my there's steaks, a bit of a There's a bit of a mean? satisfactionary, like, rating at the end so it's like ubering of okay. produce picking okay. so i think that works out i don't know missy what is your feeling on it because i think you have a stronger uh uh worry about this than i do i was hesitant about it mm-hmm. yeah but i figured mm-hmm. give it a shot okay so far we've not been upset yeah okay we however don't... the first like horrible produce thing that i get there will be some very 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 angry <laughs> bit, yeah angry words for someone yeah <laughs> I understand the steak comment, and I don't think I would order steak that way. No. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Like a bag of apples, I don't do mass inspection. I pick up the bag, I turn it around. Yeah, that's... Like, I don't go through the bag of apples and, and like... Turn the bag slowly to make sure I can we're see getting, every like, angle packages, of every apple. Yeah, we're no. getting like packages of three tomatoes. And but stuff like, like, okay, that. bananas. Yeah. I usually buy bananas mm-hmm. in a certain mm-hmm. state of green. <laughs> and oh, if I buy I, bananas oh, no by walking over to the thing and going, bloop. Okay, see, I yeah, yeah. no, but see, I uh, we go through bananas so particular. quick. Me too. Yeah. Me like too. Like Christopher, old, like strawberries, okay. bananas, and apples. Very Unless, helpful. like, I'll, I look at it enough to make sure it's not bruised. Right. There's not bruises. But he's like that. a garbage disposal. Okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Did you just that. refer to your son as a garbage disposal? Yes. Uh huh. Well, he's at that age. That's what like he <laughs> just eats. The growing age. They don't eat for a bunch of years and then suddenly it's food time. <laughs> Crazy Kraus. <laughs> On the Twitter, all the case. Yep, all the case. People can ask you questions about your sure, iOS month, ask right? Me. Ask me. I'll answer. What do you think about so-and-so? How are you dealing with this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Anybody has any game or app um, suggestions, send them my way. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, oh, hey, I was just reminded. I was just reminded because I com- I completely skipped it. This was all on me. Um, the gamejourney.com. Shachi's in the chat room. Yeah. And he is still rolling. I, I love, I, I've actually heard people uh, just kind of generally talking about, like just day to day talking about your, your video game uh, uh, journal over there. So go check it out. I'm trying to bring it up with one hand over here uh, to see where you're at currently. Um, but no, go check it out at thegamejournal.com. He's going through a thousand one games to play before you die. And, uh, and I have questions about emulation cause I need some, <laughs> I need some help, uh, with my retro pie. Uh, but, uh, we'll talk about that off air. We have, we're overdue for a brunch. Uh, anyways, Chilla at Chilla. Invite me to the, if you can invite me to that brunch, cause oh, I wanna... have one in the box that I haven't configured yet. Oh, you want to, oh, are we going to have an emulator brunch? Are you yes. in too? Uh, throw me in. I would oh, love that. Right. I would love to All sit right. in on that conversation. We'll see what's going on this weekend here, guys. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, so, okay, Chachi, you've been warned. Uh, I've been meaning to ask <laughs> you for brunch anyways, but I've been very busy. So uh, let's make that happen. Um, anyways, so bro, bro retcon brunch is happening soon. Uh, <laughs> apparently, a lot of stuff going on. Like I mentioned, Sally Wiggins is going to be coming up. The broadcast is coming up uh, at the end of the month, uh, returning, uh, as well as a lot of other great shows uh, going on around here. Thrifty just hit their 100th-ish episode, was the official title of it. Our friends Bold Sports are going to have their Sunday brunch Sunday football Super Bowl Sunday brunch uh, in a couple weeks here, so stay tuned for that as well. We'll be live streaming that on all platforms, including their uh, the the Bold Pittsburgh, uh, uh, I'm sure uh, Facebook page as well. I can't remember what we did with that last last year. They had like Penn Brewery in here last year. We had Fury Brewing, I think the year before, or maybe I'm flipping those. Um, so this guy's got a really cool thing going on there. Uh, Friends Bardic Mystery Tour is doing a great thing. That they released a Ninja Turtles themed song for their podcast go check it out it's on their facebook page i got a kick out of listening to that one too and uh comic book pitch just recorded here the other day they were here when the board died so i couldn't do a video (laughs) stream for them because we hacked together to get five mics working in the studio when it blew up um so so now that's not a problem so so look out for them those uh, new episodes will be coming up very soon uh and uh, just a lot of great stuff here uh, at the sorgotron media network a lot of great partnerships coming up in the near future and uh thank you guys thank you Ch- uh, chili you didn't plug your stuff plug my stuff at Chilla Chilla on the twitter. twitter john's chill on the facebook there you go chillatech.net uh, thank you producer missy for chiming in and keeping everything straight and keeping the social media is hopping we'll see you guys next week this is you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com